Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today's webinar. I'm Vincenzo Tursi, and I am part of manager at NIME. Uh, this is our, our third webinar of a series of webinars uh, that we are offering throughout the uh, extended virtual summit event. And today we have uh, Fabio Roncati from Chiesi on our virtual stage. Uh, Fabio has been working for Chiesi for 10 years, uh, where he's uh, heading the lead optimization unit. Uh, throughout the years, he promoted the use of uh, electronic lab notebook and uh, he was also involved in the automation and optimization of several processes uh, linked to the laboratory management and reagents of chemical. Uh, within this, NIME software was also introduced and uh, became also a key component uh, for, for these projects. And today, Fabio will present a project that was developed uh, by Chiesi and our trusted partner, Soluzioni Informatiche in Italy. Uh, before adding over to Fabio, uh, I would like to mention that uh, there is a Q&A section uh, available in Zoom that you can use to send your questions to us and upload the ones uh, you are also interested in. So we can answer uh, all of them at the end of the presentation. Okay, so I guess we are ready to start. Uh, please, Fabio, uh, feel free to start your presentation whenever you're ready. Thank you very much, Vincenzo. I hope you can see me on, uh, on your monitor. Let me just uh, show first uh, my uh, presentation in such a way everybody could see what I'm going to, uh, to talk about today. And uh, okay, now you should see the first, uh, the first slide of my of my talk today, this webinar. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Naim for the kind introduction, uh, for the possi giving me the, the possibility to to share our experience and how and share how we see now Naim uh, inside our department. Uh, today, I'm going to describe a, a small piece of the use we, we were making of NIME and it is related just to the uh, management of uh, reagents and chemicals. Um, actually, it is just a small part. We, we use NIME for several other tasks and this, is, this was mainly related to save time and make maybe someone happier. Uh, after a bit of, of optimization for day, daily work. Reagent management is uh, a multitask. I mean, uh, you need to start to purchase your chemical and then once the compound arrives, someone needs to take the, the vial and put a label, register everything into a database and then uh, be compliant with the safety data sheet uh, for chemicals. And uh, once per year, we need also to uh, write a declaration on the chemicals belonging to uh, chemical weapons precursor. Uh, we order and within the year. A lot of time wasted in uh, doing manually few of this uh, of this uh, task. Anyway, what we decide, uh, what we did, um, the, chem the chemist need needed at the beginning to go into a uh, supplier website, uh, take the compound sample uh, code, and then insert into a. a we used at the beginning in SharePoint to communicate with the secretary or the logistic to purchase the chemical. The compound arrives and then uh, people need to put uh, everything into a proper cabinet and then fill everything in our inventory management system that is based on Perkin Elmer inventory that is connected with our electronic laboratory. As I told you, they need also to go to the co um, supplier site, retrieve the safety data sheet uh, describing the chemicals and put this information in another application. One of the problems related with the workflow, it was the 
tremendous amount of manual operation we need to do. The, the high level of uh, automation was just a copy and paste when used. Often uh, the scientists uh, decided to type code and they introduced uh, a tremendous amount of uh, mistakes and this generated a lot of uh, uh, not good mood because uh, people needed to uh, run again the the import and uh, and people were not happy on about this uh, this workflow and uh, working with the chemicals uh, the the most important information is the structure as in the website of for example Merck or Sigma Aldrich the the structure is just an image it is not possible to transfer and to uh, make the correct use in our uh, inventory system because uh, chemical molecules are stored with a proper proprietary uh, format and it was required to convert this into or a smile or a compound name into the proprietary uh, format. So uh, people were not happy and a lot of time was consumed and we decided to uh, automate something. Uh, first of all, we uh, worked on our SharePoint interface and we added this functionality that we call uh, cast to smile um, Type the cast of the compound that you need to purchase, uh, click on this button, and you retrieve from PubChem the Smile code. Uh, now, Smile is already into a, into a database, and it was uh, very easy to think uh, okay, that's perfect. Now we have the starting point to automate the entire process. Uh, NIME was perfect to connect. Uh, table-like um, application like SharePoint is and uh, try to transfer all this data into our uh, inventory um, that is provided by Perkin Elmer. It's an Oracle relational database. We wanted to eliminate most, if, if not all, the manual operation li uh, linked to this workflow. That means uh, used to manage roughly thousand different reagents, so different kind of molecules and so on, and for a total amount of between two and three thousand uh, co single container per year. Uh, this is uh, the logical of our workflow. SharePoint, uh, now I need to retrieve data from SharePoint, check all the new arrivals, check if the compound already exists in our database and if it doesn't register the compound into inventory, and then register the information related to um, the single container, um, retrieve the density from PubChem, and at the end, just print labels for all the containers and send a report to the compound management, um, the reagent management groups. Uh, this is the real workflow that we have implemented. Uh, we started from a rough idea and uh, we asked our friends of SIN and especially Andrea Ciacci that was speaking just a few seconds ago to uh, complete and put uh, the, the idea in a good shape. Uh, and this is what we, uh, what we obtained. Uh, now I would like to uh, provide just a few small details on the most critical step and uh, we, we need to work on to make this initial idea properly working. Uh, the first was the connection between SharePoint and NIME. Uh, I personally worked for a while trying to connect uh, uh, in the easiest way uh, with, with the SharePoint. And uh, I also tried to uh, involve people uh, posting uh, a request on December 2017 into forum, but nothing was so helpful to avoid the user third party uh, driver. Um, we need we, we decided to rely on the on this uh, third party uh, JDBC driver from uh, C data because it does not require 
any any further configuration in case we need to add additional fields or change the view it is already there like a classical database very easy to uh, to use and to use the config initial configuration was not that easy because it was required to include the certificate for our corporate uh, um, SharePoint uh, site into the CASR DB for the Java virtual machine embedded in NIME. It took a while, but at the end it work, It works very well. And then, quite easy, uh, check if the compound exists uh, into the database. Uh, for this purpose, we, we used the uh, cartridge uh, available in the Perkin Elmer uh, in in application environment and it was quite easy make use of the smile that was available in uh, from from SharePoint to uh, search for that specific molecule into in, uh, in into our database in case the compound exists just retrieve the ID in case it doesn't uh, the, the workflow uh, registered the compound as, as a new molecule within uh, inventory. Uh, in case the compound do does not exist, we also uh, in interrogate um, in we interrogate uh, PubChem to retrieve the, the density in such a way for those um, compounds that are liquid, we can add also this piece this piece of data. It is a quite uh, simple use of the get node. Uh, we retrieve an XML that is easily parsed to extract just the, the desired numerical value for, for the density. As I told you, in case the compound uh, uh, does not exist, it, in, it needs to be registered. But we have the structure in format of SMILE, so it, it is required first to convert, and also in this case using the Oracle cartridge available from the, this comp Oracle component, uh, convert SMILE into the proprietary base 64 CDX um, format that is uh, what uh, Perkin Elmer uses for storing uh, molecules inside their Oracle database. The conversion was uh, recursively done uh, compound by compound and this, that format was ready to be uh, straightforward registered into the correct uh, table. Uh, once the compound is registered, it, it was very easy to retrieve the compound ID. Um, in such a way, we can, as a next step, we can register those data related just to uh, the, the vial, the container. Um, the relation between the um, compound and the, re the container is one too many. For a one compound, we can have several different containers. And that's uh, almost uh, the end of the registration workflow. Uh, what it was needed at the end was just to print the labels. Uh, you can see how the, the label looks like. It's, uh, is the, it's quite simple label with the arrival date, the, um, my initial, uh, the expiry date, uh, in such a way everybody can see if the compound is good or not, and the temperature we need to store RT stays for room temperature. Even the barcode, that is what we use to read the barcode with all other system we, we have in, um, within our department in, in Chiesi. At the end, the compound, those guys working compound management receive an email with all the data related to that registration. Uh, this last step is really important because it activates the next step. The next step is uh, a mandatory a retrieval of uh, um, safety data sheet. It is available from the supplier of the chemical and uh, someone needs to open the PDF and uh, uh, 
write into SharePoint the phrase, uh, risk phrase that characterize this specific uh, compound. This is mandatory and uh, it also needs to be uh, available in inventory and especially once the chemist need to start the reaction. Uh, they need to be aware of the risk related to this specific uh, reactant. So once the compound, the, this information is available in SharePoint, again, uh, NIME can uh, allow the easy retrieval of the, this piece of information, transfer that into inventory and then once the chemist scan the barcode of the uh, the reagent all these phrase, uh, risk phrases are written in uh, the page of the of the chemist quite quite easily and this close the the cycle the cycle uh, related to the um, management of data from SharePoint to the electronic uh, laboratory notebook. Uh, in this way, we save a lot of time and we transfer without any manual uh, operation from the order to the um, ELN page of the chemist. Uh, our last uh, use of NIME related to compound management, it's a task very, very boring uh, and, and it is mandatory. Once per year, we need to notify the Italian ministry the, the use, the import, the, the, manage, the handling of uh, chemicals that are included into the list of precursor of uh, chemical uh, weapons. Unfortunately, those lists are available just in textual format. Uh, often the CAS of the compound is not available and uh, the structure is available only as a structure. Uh, so we decided to complete uh, this task using NIME and it is, the schema is uh, reporting into this uh, slide. Uh, and this is what uh, we, we did. Um, starting from inventory, we retrieved all the information. We cross-check uh, with the list of uh, substances in digital format. So we converted the UPAC name of the compound in this list into uh, molecules. In, to smiles and then using this uh, node from the RT kit uh, uh, kit uh, we just uh, completed this cross cross check and the end we generated a report that looks like uh, here this uh, the reagent we we use the is in this column and the, the column here aside there is the precursor as it is included into the list of uh, precursor of, of chemical weapons. Uh, we also decided to add uh, this parameter that is a simple similarity just to uh, notify uh, our uh, colleagues from the health and safety department uh, if we use the uh, molecules that are not only included into the list of controlled substances but uh, also similar. So we communicated them even a certain level of uh, similarity for their evaluation. This is not mandatory, it is just for their best evaluation. And with this, I think I, I go to the end of my, of my presentation for today. Now what we can see is that scientists are happy because we uh, can intercept uh, errors at uh, early stage of of the order. Uh, warehouse manager are happy because they stop to do any copy and paste or any manual work. Uh, avoiding this uh, manual work, uh, data integrity is guaranteed and we saved even a bit of time, let's say one, one hour per week. Uh, maybe it's not uh, a very big uh, uh, save, but uh, on, on 
considering the entire year, it's, it's something important. And uh, we also, once per year, we saved a few hours of check for the cross check of this chemical in the list of uh, reagent, including in precursor of, of chemical weapons. And more important, we do not exclude any uh, reagents purchased because the check is done automatically by NIME. Summarizing the entire workflow, uh, apart the purchase that cannot be automated because someone uh, needs to decide what uh, want to to buy, uh, we we work it on the other three step tasks, and uh, everything is now much easier because uh, of the pivotal role that uh, NIME uh, plays in uh, in this uh, workflow. Uh, just before the end, uh, let me just uh, thank um, Andrea Ciacci from SIN because of the, the great support uh, he provided and in making this uh, rough idea a uh, fully working uh, workflow. I was also thank Roberto Forlani for the support uh, trying to understand the, the structure of uh, their, their inventory and for putting me in contact with uh, Andreas Muheim that I think is uh, on uh, connected even today from Givodan because he gave me the first uh, uh, suggestion to use NIME with inventory. I thank um, the, the community for that. I thank also my colleague at Chiesi for the support. I can't mention all of them. And I thank all the uh, people that uh, decided to listen my uh, webinar today. In case of any question not arising today, I put here also my uh, email uh, if anybody wants to call, uh, contact me. Great. Vincenzo. Thank you, Fabio, for, for this really interesting presentation and also for handling gracefully the technical issues at the beginning. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> no, pro no problem at all. It's something that can always happen. Uh, we have a few questions uh, rising in the Q&A section here, so I will maybe go through some of those. Um, so first... First of all, uh, have you tried to use the Microsoft Graph API? Or do you know that? Um, actually, I don't know. Microsoft Graph for doing what? No detail, I guess, uh, on, no, the, on the question. No, no details no. on the question. No. no. So maybe we can get more, more details later on. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, we have also Ricardo asking whether uh, the workflow is available somewhere or whether it will be available. Uh, is there any plan to make it available on the hub or at least an high level uh, workflow? Uh, I, I, I need to, to discuss uh, internally if it is possible to share this, uh, this work. Yeah. Or at, I can maybe provide a few details on how to, to implement it. Yeah, makes sense. Cool. Um, then uh, we have uh, Daria asking, uh, what is the density information retrieved from PubChem? Uh, few compound uh, per day. I, and never more than one per second. I know that uh, PubChem asked to not run intensive query on their uh, server. Uh, they ask no more than 10 per second. It is not a... Um, a massive uh, application. Uh, we can purchase few compound per day. And so we decided to run one query per second. No more. Okay, thanks. Uh, we have also Sebastian asking, uh, how is your SharePoint 9 uh, ERP deployed in production? If you use 9 server for that, uh, or if it is run on laptop uh, on demand? Oh. Uh, the plan is to move uh, to the NIME server that we also have uh, at Chiesi. Um, as uh, uh, we moved to production in July last year, but it required, uh, I would say, a, a daily check that uh, everything is, is working properly. 
during the conversion and especially in the code, let's say, for example, uh, supplier, supplier name and nothing is, uh, is lost. So I'm still uh, uh, monitoring uh, daily the, the use of this, uh, of this workflow, not mature enough to, to go to Nime server for, for example, night, nighttime uh, running. Yeah. Um, did you use BERT reporting in the NIME to, to generate the labels or what was no, the... No, actually is uh, um, it's, we started, if anybody knows the, um, the Zebra printer, it is quite uh, easy to understand. Zebra printer has its own uh, um, language, it's called ZPL. And if you print uh, just a text on the printer, the printer itself is able to interpret the, the code arriving. So we just uh, mined the uh, template text file, um, removing a few or replacing few um, placeholder with the correct uh, value. And the printed is generated automatically by the printer. Got it. Um, so we have a more detailed question here uh, if from I can. Carmine. Uh, so he's interested in the control subst uh, substances check. Uh, so he's asking whether uh, you could expand a bit the process of translating Lupac name in 2D format structures, SMILES and SDF. Uh, actually, it's not a, uh, the conversion is not done. I, maybe you can see a new slide. Yeah. Uh, up, this yeah. is this is the actually the the SQL um, co um, code we wrote. So we take the smile, and uh, there is a function embedded into the Perkin Elmer cartridge that does the work for you. This is the. Uh, the the way we, we, we use the, the native Perkin Elmer cartridge function to uh, avoid any different way to compare and check for structure. We decided not to back convert the proprietary format into smile and then maybe compare the smile because possible differences into the algorithm for the generation of smile and so on. We decided to leave this, the not the, the exact structure search to the uh, to the Perkin Elmer cartridge. Got it. Uh, we have another question from Susie uh, asking whether if you can use the same technique pull load uh, Excel file in SharePoint folder instead of SharePoint list uh, that you showed us. I don't know, actually, I don't know. I need to try. I used only to retrieve the list. The list, exactly, okay. Um, uh, there is another question relating more to the um, JDBC driver used to uh, basically connect or to interact with SharePoint from NIME. Uh, do you uh, where did you find it or uh, how can people basically try it out? I just uh, query the web for a possible provider of uh, drivers, different drivers for, um, for SharePoint. Uh, try to work as I do with uh, Oracle, for example. Uh, and at the end, I just found this, uh, this uh, provider. Okay, so we have here one last question uh, related to the to the printer. Uh, so the the way basically the data pushed to the that are pushed to the printer. So uh, and the question is if you send the labels to one or multiple printers. Just one. Just one. Just one. It's a bat file that contains a simple uh, copy to printer txt file a very old fashioned uh, MS DOS command. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
Okay, cool. Uh, so we don't have uh, any more questions here in the Q&A. Uh, if you have any more questions, you can also uh, maybe reach out to, to Fabio, um, uh, this email address. And if, if there are no more questions, I would like to thank you everyone. And thank you, Fabio, Andrea, and uh, Remo for, attend for uh, running this webinar and everyone that attended the webinar. Thank you again and looking forward to see you at the next webinar. Thank you very much.